fosse o Galvão Bueno, eu ia dizer... Alô, amigos da Rede Vida, mas eu não sou, sou só um humilde apresentador, vou dizer boa noite, amigos da Rede Vida. Olha, nós estamos aqui com uma proposta nova que você tem visto todo sábado e domingo aqui na Rede Vida, um, o Cine Vida, um cinema diferente, um cinema sério, um cinema limpo que você pode assistir com a sua esposa, com o seu filho e não se envergonhar. E hoje nós temos um filme espetacular, o professor Zé Tavares está aqui, vai nos falar dessa nova apresentação do Cine Vida. Hoje nós vamos ver o Netinho do Papai, um filme de 1952 de Vicente Minelli com Spencer Tracy e Elizabeth Taylor. Esse filme é a sequência de um filme feito no ano anterior, 1950, chamado o Pai da Noiva, que foi um grande sucesso. Eu creio que ambos inauguram, no início dos anos 50, o que se poderia chamar uma primeira etapa da comédia de situações, hoje se diz sitcom. São comédias que desenvolvem conflitos familiares, relações entre pais e filhos, entre filhos e amigos, e constitui uma base para um divertimento é, enraizado na realidade do cotidiano, na realidade das pessoas, em geral, da classe média na sociedade. São filmes que não abordam problemas sociais, nem em contextos históricos, mas tratam com muita habilidade do, da profundidade da emoção humana. No caso do Netinho do Papai, que é uma continuação, portanto, nós temos tudo centrado no personagem interpretado por Spencer Tracy. Ele é um, um pai que perdeu a filha, ela se casou, isso já foi um grande trauma para ele, e agora é um, um pai que vai se transformar em avô. O filme trabalha com muita habilidade essa questão psicológica, o enfrentamento de um problema novo para uma pessoa já situada na vida com uma certa idade. Por exemplo, ele não fica feliz ao saber que a filha vai ter um bebê. Ele se sente um pouco incomodado, um pouco em conflito, à medida em que a filha deixa de ser a menininha que ele tratou desde que nasceu e já é uma mulher. E, ao mesmo tempo, ele se sente muito constrangido com toda a festividade que a mulher, que os outros parentes, sobretudo os pais do noivo e do esposo, fazem em torno desse nascimento. Por exemplo, há uma cena muito interessante, quando um alarme falso o faz ir para a maternidade, a criança não nasce e ele leva uma grande multa do guarda que entra até na, na, no saguão do hospital para multá-lo. O filme avança dessa forma, mostrando sempre um senhor preocupado, inclusive, pelo fato de, ao ser avô, ele entende que está envelhecendo, vai fazer exercícios físicos e vai se sentir depois cheio de dores no dia seguinte. O filme avança, portanto, nessa perspectiva. Ele, desconfiado, não lhe agradam, por exemplo, as caretas, as palhaçadas que os parentes fazem quando o bebê finalmente nasce. Mas o que há de bonito desse filme, e por isso mesmo é uma comédia autêntica de situações, é a transformação que acontece por causa da criança. Aos poucos, ele se deixa encantar pelo bebê. Começa desde o um momento inicial de dificuldade até de segurar a criança, até um diálogo, quando o bebê, já com três, quatro, cinco meses, se senta e começa a entender que está cercado por alguém que o ama. O filme, portanto, avança e trabalha muito bem aquilo que todos nós sentimos como pessoas vinculadas a uma família com toda a sua variedade. Há um conflito final interessante quando ele, talvez até de forma pouco verossímil, mas se interessa por um futebol de adolescente, se esquece o carrinho com o garoto e o carrinho desaparece. Hoje em dia se pensaria em sequestro, mas essa comédia se passa há 40 anos atrás, no um momento em que as coisas aconteciam muito mais suavemente. É, portanto, o Netinho do Papai, um filme, não, talvez o mais conhecido, mas um dos grandes filmes de Vicente Minelli, que se tornou famoso por filmes musicais que ele dirigiu, como O um Americano em Paris e Gigi. Vale a pena ver o filme, buscando, então, uma referência a esse ritmo de um tempo passado, que, no entanto, é muito verdadeiro até para os dias de hoje. Sim, Vicente Minelli, genial, né? o pai da Laysa, o pai da Laysa Minelli, que depois também é uma grande atriz. E 
você não pode perder nesse filme. Logo no comecinho tem duas cenas sensacionais. Tem uma delas em que o Spencer 3 vai entrar em casa e ele troca o pé para entrar com o pé direito. Veja que curioso como ele faz isso com naturalidade. E a segunda cena nos dá uma demonstração da diferença do que era... A, a, a malícia naquele tempo e a malícia de hoje que é um negócio chão, viu ele dá um tapinha no bumbum da mulher ela fica braba ela, ela, ela fica é, revoltada e ele diz para ela, é a primavera são duas cenas deliciosas podemos ir? então, telespectador agarra aí o seu, a mão do seu marido, telespectadora os seus garotos traz a pipoca, abre o refrigerante e vamos assistir o netinho do papai Oh, boy. 
important than that? Why, that means thousands of dollars. I don't know. What, what could be more important than that? Something. Nothing. Get my coat, will you, dear? Yeah. Night, Tommy. Night, Ben. Night, Mom. Kay said she was sorry she couldn't have you, too, but she had to have Buckley's father and mother. Is Kay going to cook? Mm-hmm. You better take your bike card with you. Oh, oh no. Oh, boy, don't Tom, keep going. Tommy, a joke gets funnier every Stanley, year. Stanley, please, I promise you should go to the movies. Ben, you drop her on your way to the game. Oh, and, uh, Delilah, stack of the dishes until I ask you you'll miss the first of the picture. Uh, Tommy, don't study too late. Remember, if the rug band calls, tell them to call the... Stanley, <laughs> what's got into you? It's spring. This must be. <laughs> yes, sir, we're in a rut, Ellie. Not that it isn't a pleasant rut, but I think we ought to get out of it. You know, you're a very beautiful woman, Ellie. I stand. A very, very beautiful woman. Trouble is, I never see you. Come home at night, you want to know if I've seen the hole in the carpet or whether I'll fix the leaky faucet no, or something. Oh, I don't mean that it's your fault, no. I think we ought to forget about it, though. We ought to forget the house, forget the whole thing. Go away and take a trip. No reason why we can't. We're as free as the air. Kind of like when we were first married. Before Kay came over. Well, but this time we're not broke. We could even go to Europe. I think we'd better wait and hear what Kay has to say. Hallelujah. What about Hallelujah? That's the place. How about it, Ellie? We'll see. Oh, sure. Waikiki Beach. Moonlight on Waikiki. Flowers, ukulele, romance. A blank. Well, I'm going to call up that travel agency in the morning. Find out about those traders. Hi there. Hello, darling. There she was, my Kay, the darling of my heart. I couldn't yet believe she was a married woman. She still seemed like a kid to me, playing at keeping house. How are you? You feeling all right? Oh. Feeling all right? Look at her. How does she look? Never looked better in her life. Oh, thank you, Paul. How's he treating you? Oh, fine. You miss him? Mm, don't talk. <laughs> hello, hello. I was full of the milk of human kindness that night. I even looked at my son-in-law with a friendly eye. I don't say that he was my ideal, but I was getting used to him. Well, thanks. How are you? Nice to see you. Oh, okay. Don't stand on it. Say, uh, do you think we could kind of do away with that Father Bank stuff? Just call me Stanley. <laughs> okay, Stan. Uh, not Stan. Stanley. Stanley. Okay, Stanley. How about a little golf on Sunday? Hi, you're on. Well, it's wonderful to see you again. Thank you. Well, how are you? Oh, so, 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 so. Why, you look wonderful. Doris, how are you? How are you? What's wrong with the old man? It's the spring. It always takes it out of him. Takes it out. Puts it into me, doesn't it, darling? I suppose you got the same message we did. Very important. That's right. Wait, you had your cocktail. Oh, darling, you can't do this to Buckley, you tell us. We're all here now. Thank you, Buckley. I hope it is. I know what it is. Great news, eh, Buckley? Oh, hell, I I think it is. Oh, Oh. (laughs) Buckley, did you tell them and not tell us? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, I guessed it. You really put it over, didn't you, boy? Oh, Buckley, he's not right. It's not that horrid contract. A contract? Oh, is that contract. what it is? Thousands of dollars. <laughs> oh, and we hoped it was a baby. Oh, I prayed for a baby and now to hit this. <laughs> well, that's what it is. It is a baby. A baby? Oh, a baby? A baby. Oh, 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 that's oh, wonderful. Oh, 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 congratulations. I'd never seen such excitement. Kay was passed around like a loving cup. Oh, I can't tell you how delighted I am. Oh, That's the movie. No. Oh, Buckley stood by, trying to look modest. He only succeeded in looking slightly half-witted. Oh, oh, I grinned and tried to join in, but somehow there was a fly in the ointment. I couldn't put my finger on it, but there was definitely a fly. Yes, sir. That's the greatest news I've had in years. How about that, Grandpa? <laughs> Grandpa. That was the fly. Grandpa. First he steals my daughter, now he makes a grandpa out of me. I do wish he'd go to Dr. Bonds. After all, he's taken care of her all her life. I suppose this man is all right, though. Good gracious, November, that doesn't give me much time, and I have a million things to do. Ben! Tommy! What do you want them for? I want to tell them. Ben! Tommy, wake up! Tommy, Ben, boys, do you hear me? Something wrong? What is it? What's the matter? It's the most exciting news. Kay's having a baby. Right now? 
No, silly, in November. Poor Buckley. Poor Buckley? What do you mean, poor Buckley? He wouldn't say that if you'd been there tonight. He was just bursting with pride. We were standing there telling him how delighted he were, and he just stood there looking sort of cute and shy. Isn't he cute, Stanley? Cutest thing you ever saw. Oh, all right, all right. You're all alike, you men. Good night, Tommy. Sorry I woke you up. Now, night, Ben. Go back to your book. Goodbye, Sam. Good night, Tommy. Uh, no need of broadcasting this, you know. Uh, Mrs. Dixon, please. Allie, what are you doing calling people up at this time of the night? Well, will you please ask her to call Mrs. Banks the minute she comes in? I have some very important news to tell Ruth Dixon would not forgive me if I didn't tell her right away. You know, I think I'll give Kay a baby shower. We could have it on a Saturday, and you could ask the men to come in after. Ellie, do we really have to blaze in this thing from the housetops? Huh? You know, after all, it really isn't our affair. Stanley, what's the matter with you? I swear you act as though you almost didn't like the idea. I don't. Why, Stanley, for heaven's sake, why? I'll tell you why, exactly why. In the first place, they haven't got room enough for a baby. The little apartment they live in isn't big enough for the two of them, much less a baby. But they can always... Second place, they can't afford a baby. Babies cost money. The older they get, the more they cost. What do they think they're going to use for money? You heard him tonight, didn't you? When I asked him if he had the contract, said no. But did that phase him? Oh, no, no. He just stood there looking cute. Cute. And he's the one who's going to be the father. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. If he's got any idea that I'm going to pay for it, he's got another thing coming. I just got through paying for the wedding. But, Stan, And another thing, I think they ought to wait. Wait? For what? For seven or eight years, that's what. What do they know about children? Why, Kay's just a child herself. Here she gets out of college, marries the first guy she comes in contact with. Now she's saddled with a baby. Stanley Banks, you listen to me. I left school to marry you. Do you remember that? And do you remember when we were married? Of course you don't. We were married on the 4th of September. What's that got to do with And do you remember when Kay was born? The 21st of June. Exactly. While my class was up there on the platform graduating, I was home having a baby. Well, I don't. Ah, I know they haven't money, and the apartment is small, but those things don't really matter, do they? The important thing is that we're going to have a grandchild. Darling, it, it, it's like getting a dividend. It's like getting a dividend? Yeah, something comes to you, and you don't even lift a finger. You have none of the responsibilities of a baby, none of the hardships. All you have to do is love it. Hello? Ruth, I have the most marvelous news for you. I'm going to be a grandmother. It's like yes. a Isn't that divine? Oh, oh, we're so excited. Yes, Kay told us about it tonight. Ellie didn't seem to mind the idea. Maybe women were different, but when I thought, a grandfather. Why well, was the guy who was going places. The whole world of adventure was waiting, just waiting for me to give it the nod. And now a grandfather. I thought of the other grandfathers I knew. Why, they were old, old men. A toothless old codger down the street. That client of ours, whose only fun was cutting people out of his will. <laughs> Those ancient dodos at the club. You'd have to use a stethoscope to be sure they were still living. I didn't belong with them. I wasn't ready for the mothballs yet. Why, I hadn't even begun to live. The only trouble with me was I was a little out of condition. I spent the next afternoon in the gym. That evening, I felt like a million. But the next morning, I felt closer to a hundred. Oh. 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 Stanley Buckley's here for your golf match. Uh, What's the matter? Uh, what have you done? Oh, 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 oh nothing. Here, nothing. here, oh, here no, let me uh, help you. Uh, oh. No, no, where's, no. where's the pain? It's, it's, all, over. it's oh, all over. whatever did you do? What happened? Oh, I'll call no. Dr. Bonds and get him over here right no, away. Oh, I don't want any doctor. Oh, Stanley, for all we know, it might be your appendix. Yep. How could it be? I haven't got an appendix, and you know it. Well, I'll get Buckley. Buckley? If I don't want a doctor, I certainly don't want Buckley. Well, Buckley. 
Well, he might be able to help. Help? Don't you think he's done enough? All I want is a hot bath with some Epsom salts. All right, I'll oh, and be right there. Oh, 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 oh. The next week, Ellie gave what she called a stork shower. This is one form of highway robbery, not punishable by law. Wonderful that you got home in town. You should see the things they gave Kay. Everyone was so sweet, they all brought her something. What else could they do, honey? Oh, Stanley, you make it sound so sordid. Come on in, Kay's Oh, again. no, 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 no. No place for a man. Hi, Pop. Where are you going? Don't you want to come in and see my plunder? Well, I'll see it later. Oh, come on. Now, Stanley, now, when you're finished, I have something very important I want to talk over with you. I'll be in the kitchen. All come right, on, there Buckley looked like a man going down for the third and last time. But I decided to let him stew in his own juice. Well, what do you want, Ma? All right. I uh, wanted to talk to you before the Dunstans got here. You know how worried I've been about how we're going to rattle around in this house after Ben leaves the school in the fall? Mm -hmm. Well, I had a wonderful idea today. Oh? I say we ask Kay and Buckley to move in with us. Oh, are you crazy? Well, Stanley, it'd be so simple. We could make a sitting room for them out of Kay's old bedroom and knock through a door to Ben's room and that could be their bedroom. Then if we put Tommy in the spare room, we could put connecting doors from the bathroom, and that would be the nursery, right next to our room. We could even knock through a door to our room, so if the baby cried, Yes, could... that'd be good. No, Ellie, no. no. Stanley, it won't cost much. I had the contractor over here today. It's a perfect place for the baby, and the wonderful thing would be that if they wanted to go out some evening or even go away for a week or two, they wouldn't have to worry. We'd now be right here to take yeah, care yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll look, Ellie. I know how anxious you've been to get your hooks into that baby. But the answer is no. I've been all through that, you know. The two o'clock feedings and the colic and the measles and all the rest of it. And I'm not going through it again, especially with somebody else's baby. But it wouldn't be like that, Stan. It would be fun to have a baby. Yeah, you can go over and see the baby at their apartment when they get it all washed and ironed. But it's not coming here, and that's final. Well, you know that apartment isn't big enough. All right, tell them to buy a house. They can't afford a house. Well, they should have thought of that before. I don't understand how you can be so hard on a poor, innocent little baby. Mama, Miss Park, the Duncans are here. Would you please come out and talk to them? I've got to take a body of the girls. Of course. Come on, Stan. I always say the only exercise I get is in burying the men that take it. <laughs> really, this baby is the best thing that ever happened to Herbert. It's giving him a new lease on life. Sit down, I'll have the log. Oh, no, 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 not now. You sit down, Ellie. You sit down. Oh, I beg your pardon, dear, because I've got something I want to show you. Kay Buckley, come here. I want you to see your present. Here, take this out of the way, will you, Stan? Now, we're going to need a lot of room. Here you are, old boy. What is it? What it's is, uh... a blueprint. Here, hand me that chair. A blueprint for the future, a blueprint for happiness. There now, Stan. Just hold that side down, will you? And you hold the other side, Ellie. Well, there that's... now, you two kids. Take a look at that. What is it? It's your new home. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I'll tell you. I was looking over our house just the other day, and it came to me like an inspiration. That whole West Wing, it was the perfect place for you kids. So I called up my architect, and I had him come right out. Here, let me show you. Your own study, your own living room, dining alcove, kitchen, and laundry. And over here, baby's room, nurse's room, and master bedroom. 
And it's all plenty commodious. Yeah. Ellie was fit to be tied. She saw that baby slipping out of her hands. Her living room is 26 by 22. Is that big enough? And best of all, you'll have two babysitters ready made. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, kids, how about it? Well, hey, it's wonderful, isn't it, Doctor? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Gee, that's swallowed it. I'll get that tea now. Now, you understand, of course, that there's nothing final about these particular plans. I just thought I'd give you a general idea of what it might look like. Now, if you'd like to have your entrance here, well, that can be managed. I'll call up the architect. Thank you, It's all your fault. It never would have happened if you'd let me ask them here. Ellie, I don't get it. You're more excited about this baby than you were about any of ours. Oh, well, you don't understand. This is the time that Kay needs me the most. I was, I was going to take so much off her shoulders. I was going to help her with the shopping and help fix the baby clothes and fix the nurse. All right, all right, Ellie. If it means so much, have it here. I don't oh, care. It's too late now. They're going to the Dustins. We'll never see them. Oh. Don't be silly now. You heard what Doris Dunstan said. This baby was the best thing in the world that ever happened to Herbert. To Herbert. They're going to take over that baby's body and soul. Oh, yeah. This is ridiculous. You're acting like a... Oh, it, it was so sweet of you. So wonderful. And, and we'll never be able to thank you enough, but... Oh, it, it's really better this way. We, we'd only have gotten in your way. I'm sorry you went to all this trouble and expense, Dad. We should have told you sooner. Have you already bought it? Well, practically. We made a deposit on Sunday. I see. What's this, Kate? You got a house? I didn't realize that you were in a position to buy. Well, uh, yeah. We got a mortgage from the bank. A mortgage? What's wrong with a mortgage? I had a mortgage myself until a few years ago. Well, tell me all about the house, Kate. Where is it? Well, it's what? in the new development. It was just darling, isn't it? Yes. Bobby? It's but... just big enough for me to take care of easily, and there's a nice backyard for the baby, and, and Bob and Fliss are going to buy out Is there. it furnished? Well, uh, no, it isn't, but we thought we could buy some unpainted furniture. Sure. And oh, you can't lift a finger. You don't have to do a thing. I'll do the whole business. What's it, Mother? Well, well, I'd like to know. Well, we you can tell me that. Ellie was off again. I go down the shop and bring you the... Grupo Paris Filmes apresenta Sharon Stone, numa história onde as mulheres vão se apaixonar por ela, mais do que você. Atrás de uma grande mulher se esconde um coração ainda maior. Sharon Stone é Glória, exclusivamente nos cinemas, um filme de Sidney Lumet. For the next few weeks, I'd stop at the new house to pick up Ellie. She was working time and overtime. Hi, Dick. Let's sit in the shade. I feel so guilty. Mom's doing so much. Oh, nonsense. You know, that's the breath of life for her. Where do we sit? How about a wreath? There. Huh. How do you like to help, Pa? Oh, I think it's just right. The harsh just loved it. They said they never would have moved if it hadn't gotten too small for them. Mm. I'll let Mr. Little Bobby Harsh I'll send it to him. Pa, how did you feel when you had your first baby? Did it make any difference between you and Mom's? I, I mean, how, how did you feel? Oh, I felt fine. I mean, really? Well, I felt all right. You know, I guess my nose was a little out of joint at first. I'd been high man with your mother for over a year, and then suddenly you came along to the spotlight. You must have hated me. No, no, I don't think it was that bad. I think the worst time was the first night we took you home, you know. Yeah, I remember we got you home, gave you a six o'clock feeding, got you bedded down. Then we must have gone into your room a dozen times the next hour to see how you were. Of course, if you were quiet, we went in to see if you were dead. And if you cried, we went in to see what was wrong with you. I remember lying awake that night thinking to myself, now, what have we got into? Here we were, two perfectly happy people, free as the air. Now we're trapped. 
trapped by 20 inches of screaming humanity. Do all fathers feel that way? Only know about myself. I remember that morning you, you woke with the dawn, screaming your head off. And your mother went in to heat your formula, and I went in to see what I could do about quieting you. And I stuck a finger at you, and you grabbed it. Grabbed it with such a grip. From that moment on, you had me hooked. Oh, I hope Ugly gets over that quickly. You have to butter him up a little, you know. Make him think he's still part of the family. Thank you. Oh, there he is. Oh, honey. Uh, oh, how are honey. you, darling? Oh, oh. oh, hello there. How are you? Fine, thank you. Well, what new wonders did they accomplish today? You can see it tomorrow. Take her along. Right. Now you'll be late for the party. Come on, right. can help. Sure. Well, there's nothing left to do. Your father and I will lock up. Have fun. Well, okay. Bye. 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 Come here. I want to show you. How do you like this shade? This is a perfectly wonderful shade. We're going to use it in here Why? and in the hall and every place. It'll make the house look like that. And the same thing with the curtain. I got the most wonderful bargain today, a millet. Look at that. We're done for all the windows, and this is for the bedroom. Just wait to see the price. You'll be very proud of me. I'm staying right within their budget. I'm having a marvelous time. There's only one thing wrong. I haven't done a thing about the nursery. I could cry about it. What's the matter? Herbert's doing it. Nonsense. He was so upset about their not moving in with him, he said the least they could do would be to let him furnish the nursery. He's going to give him a crib and a bassinet and a screen and a chest of drawers. It'll probably all be done in 14-carat gold. What are we going to give the baby? Stan. What are you so surprised about? Didn't you think I was going to give the baby a present? Well, as a matter of fact, there was something I was looking at today that would make a wonderful present. You put it right in this window, and it keeps the air clean and the right temperature. Oh, it's really? very pretty and modern looking. It's quite expensive. What's the name of it? I don't know the name of it, but it will only extend this far into the room. Uh, downtown. You see, uh, you regulate it from here. It controls the air and the temperature at all times, see? No dust, no soot, no pollen. Hmm. Wonderful. Ellie's idea. I wish we'd had one for Tommy. He probably wouldn't have those adenoids. <laughs> it is wonderful. And look, over here. Come here, I want to show you this. Where is he? You turn it on and leave it here beside his crib. And then you can go out and close the door. And if he cries, or even if there's any change in his breathing, you can hear it from anywhere in the house. No. Well, they're certainly going to love that. And here's his combination bath and dressing table. Right? Just the right size. What is that? What is that? Oh, that's mine. I thought he might as well get used to it. He'll be going there someday. Oh, he will? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I've already registered him in the class of 1973. Mm. I'm a Dartmouth man myself. Ah, oh, that's a good college, too. Now, this bath stand, I want you to notice the height of it. A good college. <laughs> a good college. We beat you in football in 1947, 1948, and 1949, and we shall probably... and. We have defeated you five years running in hockey, and our bobsled team is probably the finest that has ever been developed in the history of the world. And he's made some fresh coffee. A good... <laughs> That's one of the funniest remarks you've ever made. No, 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 no,
Lauren. Larry. Remember how dear he was. How about Timothy? I think that has everything. Do you like the name of Timothy K? Well, I... Now, Ellie, they've already told you. They've been all through this. Why do we suggest any more names? Besides, the names they have are wonderful. Jonathan, Michael, Andrew, they're all wonderful names. But you have to think of two names that, that go together. Andrew, Dunstan, that doesn't sound very good. Stanley, they haven't made up their minds. They need our help. If I may interrupt, I think you're going about this all wrong. My idea would be to use a family name. Well, that's right. The first grandson is always supposed to have the name of the paternal grandfather, isn't he? No, 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 now, Doris, that's not what I meant. I was thinking of my great-grandfather, Malcolm. Or, well, say Uncle Wilford. Well, if we're talking about family names, what about Stanley? Stanley Dunstan, that ought to satisfy everybody. Well, we did think about that. No, no, no. Now, one Stanley in the family is enough. You're right. Now, how about Cornelius? That's a family name. And then, let's see, there's Gregory and Dexter and David. Oh, I had some wonderful names in my family, too. Milo and Pennington. Pennington. Now, that's a nice, that'd be a nice name. Pennington. We're all talking about boys' names. What if it's a girl? We've got to decide on a girl's name. Oh, it won't be a girl. Don't worry. The Dunstans always run to boys. I'm not worried. I want it to be a girl. I like girls. Where are you going, darling? I, I thought I'd wash the dishes. Oh, nothing of the sort. I'll do Mother, please let me go. You do too much, Kay. You must rest more. Well, I don't agree with you. I think some work is good for her. I think she should have a maid. I'd be perfectly willing to... Of course, I don't pick. mean she should work if she's tired. It's this young doctor of hers. I've always said she should have gone to our family doctor. We wanted her to go to our doctor, too. There's nothing the matter with my doctor. He's fine, wonderful. He told me not to pay any attention to... N- n- nobody seems to realize this is my baby. Mine and Buckley. You seem to think, well, the way you talk... Well, well I'll have you know this. I'm going to have my baby the way I want to. succeeded in reducing her to hysterics. What do you say we get out of here and go home? Oh, she's just high Where are strung. your things? I'll her. get them. Oh, thanks. Huh? Uh, we're going to run along, kitten. Please come in, Pop. Quiet. I'll take the things. I was horrible. I was terrible. I'll never forgive me. No, no, no. We, we, we deserve much worse than that. It wasn't you. You never interfered with, with the others. Mother and Father Dunton and, and Mom. I'm doing too much. I'm doing too little. She wants a girl. They want a boy. No matter what the baby is, somebody's going to be disappointed. Yeah, I think you, what you'll have to do is have, uh, you know, twins. One of each sex. Thank you, for you, Pop. You're the only one with any sense. Oh, no, no. I'm just as bad as the rest of them. But I'll tell you this. There's going to be no more of it. It'll never happen again. We'll never gang up on you again, believe me. Thanks, Pop. You relax, kid. Now, from now on, it's going to be your way. And, and y- you won't let them make a fuss with Dr. Nordell, will you? What do you mean, dear? Oh, but the Johnson said they were going down to have a talk with him. Oh, Pop, you won't let them do that, will Oh, you? of course I won't. What nonsense. He's your doctor. You have confidence in him, faith in him. No one has a right to destroy that confidence. Thanks, Pop. It, it isn't their fault, really. It's just that, well, I, I guess they just don't understand the new way of looking at things. Well, after all, as Dr. Nordell says, birth is a perfectly natural thing, a, a, a glorious thing. And once you be conscious every minute so, so they don't miss a second of it. So he believes that a it. woman should be aware of the wonderful thing that's happening to her. And another thing, he doesn't believe that a woman should be separated from her baby for one second after it's born. You, you should carry it with you right right back to your room and, and, and keep it there with you. That, sleeping right there with you in, in your hospital room. That is a little new, isn't it? Oh, that's... Pops, that's not new. Primitive woman has always done it. Dr. Nordell was in the Pacific and he said the women there were... Why, they were never separated from their babies. They, they kept them slung on their backs for the first two years of their lives. And he said it was wonderful for the babies. He said if he had his way, all of his mothers would do that. You'd, you'd carry them on your back while you were doing your housework, and then 
when it got hungry, you'd, you'd swing it around and, and feed it and then swing it back again. He says he gives the baby a wonderful swing feeling it. of security. Uh, darling, you're, you're, you know, you're sure that this doctor... I oh, mean, Pop, everybody... you're not going to start that, too. Oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. Dr. Nordell is wonderful. Yes. He, he's marvelous. He's, well, he's simply terribly wonderful. Oh, I'm, darling, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. Oh, thank you, Pop. I'm sure. Now, you, you just go to sleep and relax. Okay. Yeah. Good, Good night, night, Pop. Good night, Doc. Good night. Dr. Nardell, we'll be with you in a minute. Please be seated. Thank you. I just don't like the idea. I thought we said last night, the Dunstans and all of us, that we weren't going to interfere anymore in their affairs. I'm not going to have my daughter walking around for two years with a papoose on her back. Darling, I tell you, that's figurative. He didn't mean that literally. Just want to be sure. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad you came. Now I've met the whole family. Mr. and Mrs. Dunstan Sr. were in this morning. They were? They were a little anxious, thought Kay was doing too much. But I think I convinced them that she was all right. That's a wonderful daughter you have. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Won't you, Mrs. Banks? Thank you. Ah. So, what can I do for you? Well, as a matter of fact, my wife has been a little worried, too. And, uh, uh, you know, how uh, mothers are at this time, only daughter and all that sort of thing. I thought the best thing to do would be to bring her down here and let her have a talk with you. I think that's very sensible. What particularly worries you, Mrs. Banks? Well, actually, I... I well, mean, actually, it's the whole thing, isn't it? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, about it all being so natural and everything. I'm just trying to take away any fear she might have. You know, the fear of pain can really produce pain. But if she understands the whole process, if she has confidence in me, if she knows that I'm going to be right there with her to help her when she wants help, if she trusts me, that's half the battle, isn't it? Yes, it is. And then after, having the baby in the room with her, I'm trying to persuade my mothers to go back to caring for their babies themselves, feeding them themselves, bathing them, being close to them. Instead of handing them over to some nurse. I know this is a lot to ask of your daughter. It's, it's a full-time job. But believe me, the rewards will be great. Not only for the baby, but for Kay. There you are, Ellie, I told you. All of you worry for nothing. It's a... Thank you, Doctor. You were nice to give her so much of your time. It's to my advantage. If I have you with me, then believe me, everything's going to be that much easier. Well, you certainly have us well, with you. Well, thank you very you much, Every You're very welcome. Well, you can count on very that. Happy Every, happy uh, come on now, Ellie. Well, 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 <laughs> For the next month or two, everything was peaceful. Too peaceful. I should have known it was the calm before a storm. Ellie, ask telephone, Ellie. Hello? Hello? Buckley? What? Buckley? You know what time it is? It's a quarter of three. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Is Kay there? Kay? Why, of course she is there. What would she... Hello? Hello? Uh, uh, Buckley? I'll, I'll take this downstairs. Hang on. What do you mean, is she here? Well, I thought if she were there, I could come and pick her up if she were there. When did she leave? What time did she leave? Well, I don't know. I, I've been out for a few hours. I just got back a little while ago. Or was it a fight? Did you have a fight? Well, we'd had an argument, yes. Look, if anything happens to her, I'll kill myself. Don't worry, I'll do it for you. Did, did, did you look her Did she take anything with her, a bag or anything? 
She took her hat box and her umbrella and her toilet case and her toothbrush and her... Oh, well, don't worry about it, then. If she took a toothbrush, she's not headed for the river. Uh, uh, did you call up any or try anybody else on the phone? Well, you might do that. All right, I'll be right over. Any word? No. Did you call her friends? Everyone I could think of. From the hotels. And... I can't yeah. wait any longer. I'm going to call the police. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Don't, don't do that yet. Maybe we can figure this thing out. Uh, uh, did she take the car? No. Is there a bus runs by at this hour? Anybody you think of might have picked her up? I've covered the field. Well, then it must be a cab. What's the number? Fairview 6... Fairview 61098. But it's no use asking them. They told me they don't give out that information except to the police. Fairview 61098. They said they had to make it a blanket rule. There are too many wives wanting to leave their husbands. Do you have much cash? I don't believe so. I give her money, but she keeps losing it. Is this the first time she's left you? What do you mean by that? Oh, come, 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 my boy. I'm married, too, now. Has she ever done anything like this before? No. She locked me out a few times, but that's all. Hello? Hello, are the Green Cab Company? Uh, now I know this is against your rules, but I, I certainly would appreciate it if you could help me out. Uh, did you get a call last night from 324 Adams Street? Look, I told you once, it's against rules. Well, uh, you see, I'm, I'm not her husband. You see, I'm her father. And, uh... She's, uh, well, she's, uh, she's expecting, uh, you know, and, uh, you know how they are in that condition sometimes, say, uh, if you could find it in your heart to help me, I certainly would appreciate it. Well, there was a call. Where did you take her? Thanks. Thanks very, very much. We won't forget this. Where'd she go? Home. Home. Home? What do you mean, home? This is her home. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean my home. Come on. I'll wait here. Do you want her to come back, or don't you? Yes. Well, then you'll have to go and get her. That's the first law of marriage. You can't expect any self-respecting wife to come home under her own power. I don't suppose you want to tell me what the quarrel was about. If you don't mind, I'd rather not talk about it. Okay. I don't know whether you know it, but your daughter's got a terrible temper. I'm sorry. And this business tonight, why, it's like a child. And a spoiled child at that. She's got to grow up. She's got to be made to realize that she can't go running home to you every time there's something that she doesn't like. Well, what do you want me to do? Pack up and move? Got your key, I suppose. Why didn't you ring? Oh, I... I didn't want to wake up you anymore. I'm all right. The doctor told me to sleep with plenty of fresh air. Well, you certainly had your share for tonight, I guess. Come on. First, I... I want you to know this box. I've left Dunkley. I've left him for good. I wish you'd tell moms for me. Ask her not to fuss no use. It's over for good and all. I'd rather not have to talk about it. All right, kitten. It'll be however you want it, dear. 
Come on, I'll have your room ready for you in a jiffy. Oh, Pops, why did it have to end like this? Everything was so wonderful at first. I felt fine. Everybody was so sweet to me. It takes too long, that's all. It drags out too long. I'm ugly now. I'm clumsy. Oh, God, darling, don't say that. Don't you know that you have a beauty now that you never had before? I know what I look like. I'm dull and stupid. I can't do any of the things I used to do. Now when I need him most, I've lost him. He doesn't love me anymore. Kid, you mustn't think things like that. He loves you more than ever. He's frantic with worry. Or well, he just said to me, if anything happened to you, he'd kill himself. What do you mean? Did he call you? He's right out there now. Oh. I suppose he told you everything. Didn't tell me anything. Just said you had an argument. An argument? That's wonderful. Do you know what it really is? There's someone else, Pops. He's found someone else. He goes off and leaves me every night and tells me he goes to the office. But it isn't true. I've called the office and he isn't there. He's in love with someone else. Oh, don't, don't. Please. We'll talk about it tomorrow. You've got to get your rest. I'll, I'll, I'll send him away. I'll send him away. She's here. She's been asleep. I wouldn't try to talk to her if I were you in the mood she's in now. Did she say why we had a fight? Yes. Well, look, I'd like to say something. Just for the record. It's not true. Not a word of it. I've been working every night. After all, I'm going to have a baby. You know, I, I want to give him. She said that she phoned me twice there. Nobody answered. Believe me, it, it must have been just a few minutes I stepped out for a cup of coffee. I told her this again and again. She won't believe me. Well, you ought to have more sense to argue with her at a time like this. You know she isn't herself. Well, I'm not myself either. Look, I even thought of having a man call Kate and tell her. And I said to myself, she doesn't believe me. She doesn't believe me that I'm working like crazy night after night for her and the baby. She doesn't take my word for it, then it doesn't matter. It's finished anyway. It's off. It's finished. Now, wait a minute. Off. Wait a minute. We'll all talk about this in the morning. We'll have some sleep. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing more to say. May I use your phone? I'd like to call a cab. I'll drive you home just as soon as I get Kay settled. Thanks. I'd rather take a cab. Suit yourself. He's calling a cab. Suppose he denied everything. He told me his side of it. You don't believe him, do you? Darling, I only know that he really loves you. Oh, that isn't true. He doesn't love me. He doesn't care whether I live or die. Oh, I never should have married him. A little late to think about that. Uh, 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 come on now, you really must catch your sleep, darling. Come on, come on now. I'm going to... Uh, Forgive me for interrupting. Your phone is out of order. Well, that's ridiculous. Now, Lord. Hello. Hello, operator. You take it home, Pop. I can take care of myself. Operator, up. Oper You're not supposed to carry things. You know that. I'll take them up. We don't need your help, do we, Father? No, 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 no. Here, I'll get one. You don't have a room for her down here, someplace you can fix up as a bedroom. There's a couch in the living room. She wants to try that, find it a little hard. hard maybe. You know you're not supposed to walk up and downstairs. Another thing, she's supposed to drink eight glasses of water a day. She forgets. So if you could remind her. I'll try. And her exercise. Dr. Nordell wants her to walk two to three hours each day. 
uh, an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. And we usually take a walk in the evening. And she's supposed to be in bed at 9.30. I'll try and remember. And the calcium pills. Did you bring your pills? No, I forgot. I'll go home and get them. Won't I do in the morning? I'll give them to your father when he takes me home. Now they your shoes. Sure, they really are for you, though. You know you can't do them yourself. The days went on and nothing happened, but tension mounted. Buckley watched Kay as if she were a time bomb. That's her book. Oh! What is it, Kay? What's the matter? Oh, I reneged. I had her heart in my hand all the time. I don't know what I must be thinking about. As November came and the great event drew nearer and nearer, we all waited with bated breath. Is that the phone? No, it is. Well, I guess it'll get a little air. Stanley. Hmm. As long as you're going, would you give us the K? K? Who said anything about K? I never could fool Ellie. But I hoped I could fool K. Stanley. Hello, oh, hello, hello. Oh, hello. Hi. 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 Is this a beautiful night? Oh. See those stars? Mom sent me over with this. Oh, thanks. Go on, go on, open it up. Open it up. Don't mind us men. Let me take your coat. Oh, I can, I can do it. I can do it. Well, at least let me help you. All right. I'm glad you came by tonight. Oh, she's awfully low. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. She's just nervous. I wish you'd talk to her. Oh, it's lovely. What is it? It's a beautiful bed jacket. Isn't that pretty? Oh, you certainly are going to knock their eyes out of the hospital. <laughs> I'll go pack it right now. Kay, Kay, now that your father's here, you won't mind. I'd like to get some cigarettes. You don't have to run right along, do you? Oh, no, I can squeeze out a couple of minutes, I guess. I won't be long. Hold everything till I get back. You look wonderful, Kitten. Oh, I feel fine. It's just lovely. I wish you'd talk to him. He's so jittery.
what's he jittery about? Oh, he... He's afraid that... Oh, something will go wrong. Oh. He shouldn't feel like that. Of course, I... I can't tell him that, uh... That it's going to be easy for you. It may not be, but... But I do know this, that when the time comes, you... You mothers seem to have a courage and a strength you never knew you had. I hope so. Oh, I hope so. As far as anything going wrong, the doctors and the scientists have been working for hundreds of years now so that you and your baby can be safe. Nothing's going to go wrong. You know that, don't you? I know. Oh, Pop. I wish it was over. But it will be soon, darling. And I'm sure that, that when you hold your baby in your arms, you'll think it was worth anything you went through. Are that silly? Like the first day you took me to the dentist. Every night we put our clothes where we could grab them in a hurry. We were like members of a fire brigade, ready to jump at the first alarm. Well, it happened almost any time now, huh? I suppose so, sometime within the next two or three weeks. Two or three weeks? I couldn't live like this another two or three weeks. Hello? Uh, sorry to wake you, but I just brought Kate to the hospital. Huh? No, I don't know anything yet. The doctor's with her now. We'll be You're right, right there. there. Jack, you've got to really dress. There's no telling how long we'll be down there. Do you remember to put the razor in your pocket? The razor? Yes, your electric razor. Then it doesn't matter where you have to go to shave. And a green shirt. Well, wait, Tommy, please. And I guess we've got a wire then. So you can phone the message in. I must remember the tone of oil. Take the rest in case the baby falls out. And Jack, please hurry. <laughs> I'll just get dressed. I'll have to get my clothes up. I'll drive. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. If we don't hurry, the baby will be born before we get drive. there. Come on. The baby will be born before we'll ever get there. If you... <laughs> Keep your eye on the road. Your tie's on crooked. Fix it. Ellie, that's me. Come on now, Ellie. Pull over here. Let me drive. Come on. Stanley, be careful. No, 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 Ellie. You can't make it. There's a train. Will you relax? You're making me nervous. You realize what you've done? You've broken every regulation in the book. You've passed everything on the wrong side. You've gone through red lights. You've exceeded the speed limit. I know, but this is an emergency. For the first time in my life, I long for the sight of a motorcycle cop. Park it, will you, Stanley? Nothing happened. It, it was a false alarm. I'm sorry we didn't watch you all this way. Oh, all right. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Good night, darling. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. Well, it's 
something wrong, Orson? Yes, lady, there is. He's parked in front of a fire hydrant. After a week, the strain became too much for me. I decided to take a sleeping pill. It's a boy. He arrived just a half an hour ago. Huh? Okay, he's fine. The doctor says everything's just fine. Yeah. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Give her our love. Give her our love. Ellie. Ellie. Mm -hmm. Remind me to tell you something in the morning. Mm -hmm. Tell me what, Stanley. Tell me what? Stanley, wake up. Tell me, is it coming about Kay? Stanley. This is a boy. Oh, Stan. Oh, isn't that wonderful? A boy. crazy, or was I? He looked as old as Methuselah to me. All he needed was a derby. Oh, boy. What do you think you're so <laughs> Look at his smile. Oh, darling, who do you think he's like? He looks exactly like Kay. Oh, Kay. Like oh, I think you're wrong there, Ellie. He's a dunson through and through. What are you call it? it? Call him, son, him. No, I believe they're talking about calling him Herbert. Oh, I believe they are. <laughs> oh, Herbert, isn't that wonderful? I, oh, I hope you don't mind. I mean, since you're the maternal grandfather, I would oh, say no, you no. might Oh, no, no. I should say I know. As a matter of fact, I think Herbert is just the name for him. Oh, oh. Well, I, I admit he looked a little better by the time Kate got him home. Perfect. Good. Look at it. Did you ever see anything so good? Did you ever see them taken? When is he going to be christened? It's been five or six months. We want to wait for Reverend Goldsworthy. Come on, Bob. You have your picture taken with the baby. Oh, no, no, no. Well, we've no, all no, had no. our pictures no, taken. No, no, no. Come on, man. Oh, please, Bob. Come on. Just do it for me. I want no, a picture no, of the two no. of you oh. together. Yeah, we'll sit him right here. How about that, my boy? Is that all right with you? Oh, no. He's smiling at you. <laughs> hey, Seth. Oh, oh, catch him just like that. Oh, no, no, I don't know. I just... Uh... There we go. Oh, no, don't, don't give them to me. No, no, you sit down. Now go on, smile at you, Grandpa. <laughs> see, it's no use. I well, turn, him turn him around. Turn him around so we can see his face. Come on, turn him around. That's it. That's it. Oh, see, it's... Uh, look, look. Oh, I'm not going to do that. Let's go. 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 What'd you do to him? What do you mean? I didn't do anything to him. I think he's tired. He really must go. Oh, by the way, Stan, I had this made up for you. It's a photographic record of the baby from the day he was born. Here, look at him here. And then wait, wait. And take a look at that. And here, here. Isn't it amazing? Why, well, he changes it every day. Not to me, he doesn't. Coming to this. Yeah, put it in your pocket. Show the boys you know. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Stanley. Take good care of our Drake bed boy. <laughs> Come here. How about a Drake big drink? Huh? Yes, dear. Come in. He's quiet. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Now, look. It's no use, you oh, know. Oh, just... didn't have anything to do with you. It's just that well, well, there were so many other people around him. It, it scared him. Come yeah. on. Oh, come on in. 
see everything's all right now. He's not scared anymore, is he, darling? Now you've got a nice man here, and you're going to give him a big smile because you're a good boy. Now look who's come to see you. Who is that, huh? Wow. Who is that? Is that your grandfather? <laughs> yeah. Oh, honey, you terrible child. Nothing, nothing, nothing. He just took a look at me. He's so funny. He's such a good-tempered baby. The doctor said he'd never seen a baby with such a wonderful disposition. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. And it isn't because you're a man. He was smiling all over the place at Herbert. Pop! Well, now, come on. Let the, let's blow. Let's blow. Oh, Pop! We've come to apologize. We want to say that we're very sorry for being so rude. Now, now, now you tell him you forgive him. Come on, honey, give him a great big smile. Tell him how much. Oh, it's all right, darling. He's gone now. It's all right. The man's gone. You know what I can do? Take your tie. If you just take off your tie. No, Ellie, I'm not going to take off my tie. It's a perfectly nice tie, and I happen to like it. It was a present from Tommy, and I'm not going to take it off just because he doesn't like it. Oh, Stanley, the way you talk. He's a baby, an innocent little baby. He doesn't know what it is. He is not an innocent little baby. He's an individual with very definite likes and dislikes. As an individual, I respect his right to have likes and dislikes, but I also reserve the right to have a few of my own. From that time on, I gave him a wide berth. It was live and let live between us until one weekend, six months later. the bank's house? Well, yes, but, uh, what? feared had come to pass. He had invaded the sanctity of my home. Hi, Pop. Hi, hi, Ted. You have a visitor. It's all right with you, Pop, and you don't mind? Oh, uh, no, I'm delighted, delighted. He's nice, Pop's really is. It's just that well, you two got started off on the wrong foot, that's all, and I thought, well, well, if I left him here for a couple of days alone with you... Alone? Well, I mean, I, I won't be here myself. I'm going to Boston. Luckily, he has to go there and see Mr. Wellsford, you know, the chain store man, and he asked me to come, and I said I couldn't leave the baby, but Mom said to go ahead and that she'd take care of him. Oh, Pops, I know you're going to love him, just as soon as you get to know him. He has been a little strange. Oh, there's my taxi. i got to run. Yeah. And, and remember this, Pops. If he so much as lets out a peep at you, you have my permission to spank him and spank him good. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, well, Bye, Mom. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Is that you? Yes, it's me. The most wonderful thing has happened. I thought you'd never get here. Uh, you, uh, yes, Kay told me. Oh, come up and see him. Quick, quick. Of course, we're not quite organized yet. Well, where is he? I don't want to step on him. In your bureau drawer over there. Well, that's my dress scarf. Well, what are you doing with my dress? What? what, what what's going on? I'm, I'm, look at here. What are you doing with me? What are you doing? Well, he's eating my scarf. Oh, that's all right, dear. It's clean. It can't hurt him, can it? My yeah. darling, wouldn't yeah. it? have to be in that particular drawer with all my shirts? I put the shirts out there, right there. You can put them back now. Well, I love you. Oh, your lovekins, oh, Stanley. It's so wonderful having a baby in my arms again. Who is a sweet boy? Who is an angel? Look at the shirts. Who is going to sleep in a nice big room? What? You going to sleep in this room? No, he's going to Tommy's room. Where's Tommy going? In the Ben's room. I want him right here so I can hear him if he cries. 
You know, he's good, but strange house and everything. No mommy or poppy, but he's going to be a good boy, isn't he? Of course he is. I'm sorry I can't go to the Dixons, but you're going anyway. I phoned Ruth, and she's delighted to have an extra man. It's all set. Yeah, well, I'm not going. Oh, not Stanley. No, 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 no. I'm going without you. They're your friends. Well, that's ridiculous. You can't eat here. There's no food in the house. Of course, there's last night's cold lamp. You don't mind waiting on yourself. Where's Delilah? She's making up Kay's room. Who's going to sleep in Kay's room? You are. Now, look, look, look. Stanley, it's the only room in the house where you can't possibly hear the baby, and I promised Kay you wouldn't be disturbed. Everything's ready, Miss Benny. Oh, good. And Delilah, would you mind taking these and sterilizing them? You can use the canning pot. You don't have to tell me. I remember. Mr. Banks, isn't it just wonderful having a baby in the house oh, again? Oh, it's just wonderful. Just wonderful. Just wonderful. Great, great. Well, let's get to it. I look forward to Sunday morning. No alarm clock, no train to catch, no office, just uninterrupted slumber. I just have to let you see him. He's so cute. <laughs> what time is it? Six o'clock. Six o'clock? Well, go back to sleep, dear. Bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Sunday afternoon, I counted on a good 18 holes of golf. But Ellie thought the baby and I should get together. 45 minutes later, he finally corked off. Nice kids. 
I was having a good time. It was a good game. I was wondering whether or not to tell Ellie about it. She'd probably think I was crazy playing ball with a lot of kids. Suddenly thought maybe Ellie came and got him. I didn't take the train, I flew. I got so homesick for the baby. Where is the baby? Shouldn't he be home by now? Oh, don't you worry. He's with your father, so he's all right. You should see your father. Turned in a baby here. I've lost a baby. <laughs> Is it your baby? Oh, no, 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 no. It's my daughter's baby. It's my grandson. Where'd you lose? I, I lost him in the park. It was in the park and uh, in, in his carriage. I left him for a second. When I came back, he was gone and the carriage was gone. You say you only left him for a second, eh? Oh, well, maybe a minute. I don't know. Five minutes. You know, some kids were playing soccer and I went to watch them get kind of interested. And I you forgot your grandchild. Well, I guess I did for the minute. That's fine. That's wonderful. They give you a child of mine and you run off and forget him. What's the matter, Jack? You're losing your marble? Oh, wait a minute. This kind of talk is... Do you... Did you understand what I said? A baby has been lost. A little baby has... Why don't you do what you're supposed to do? Do something. Get on the television. Tell the typer. Whatever you do, describe the baby's five months... Six, six months old wearing a little, little white... You know what babies wear. He's got, got on a little cap, I think. Would you know what color his eyes are? Brown, 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 blue. I, I don't know. But you are sure it's a boy. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You haven't said anything to me. I haven't said to myself. My daughter's home now waiting for the baby. I don't know what to do. I'm going crazy. I'll, I'll do anything. Look, I'll have a big reward. Whatever. Whatever I have to do. If you'll just help me. Well, it just so happens we picked up your baby. Oh, thank God. But it wasn't any five minutes you were gone. It was nearer a half an hour. Yes, sir. Where is he? In here? Yeah. Uh, just a minute. What's your daughter's phone number? I'm going to call her up and oh, check. Oh, no, don't do it. Don't, please, please don't do it. Don't do it. You don't know. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't face my daughter. Uh, please, I promise you, I'll do anything. If you'll give me the kid, I'll take him right home. I won't stop anywhere. I promise you. Well, I'll talk it over with the boys. I've taken quite a fancy to this kid. If they got any idea you weren't treating him right, you'd never get out of here alive. All right, boys, they've come for him. I dreaded the moment when he'd see me. I knew if he started to cry, I was cooked. I said a little prayer. Don't let him cry. Just this once, don't let him cry. Come on, son. We're going home. Come on. Well, that's my boy. That's my boy. <laughs> From that time on, I was his pigeon. 
The day of the baby's christening came at last. He was the center of a little world. His grandparents, his parents, and his godparents, all of us gathered together for the solemn occasion. I couldn't help feeling we were ganging up on him, pinning the name of Herbert on a poor, defenseless child. Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Funny how I had resented the very idea of him when Kay first told us. I was furious at both of them making me a grandfather. He seemed to spell the end of my life. And now, now I couldn't imagine life without him. Of our Heavenly Father, now and forevermore. Amen. We were coming to his big moment. We all watched him with bated breath. How would he behave? When the Reverend Galsworthy took him in his arms, would he be terrified? Would he cry? Not that baby. To him, the Reverend Galsworthy was just another face to be explored. Name this child. Stanley Banks. Stanley Banks, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. We receive this child in the congregation of Christ's flock, and do sign him with the sign of Stanley Banks, my grandchild. He shall not be ashamed. My first grandchild. Amen.